We're joined now by Republican Congressman Pete Sessions of Texas. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. At least 20 million Americans watched the first night of public hearings last week, and we saw the second day from the committee today. Have you watched any of the hearings at all so far? Lindsay, I have. I've, I've spent a little bit of time watching not only uh, the committee, but also the uh, important people that came before to talk about their uh, vision and viewpoint about what happened uh, now almost a year and a half ago, and I did see that. And what are your thoughts so far? Well, my thoughts so far are that it is my hope that these uh, hearings also go further past not just uh, the election, the weeks preceding uh, January 6th, but also afterwards where there have been uh, evidence of uh, what, what General, Attorney General Barr said today was not a widespread vote uh, uh, belief uh, across the country. But now a year and a half later, there has been a development of a good bit of data and information uh, about the importance of what I believe federal law enforcement is now aware of and looking at. And one person who also said that he's watching is Attorney General Merrick Garland, along with the prosecutors who are making cases against January 6th defendants. And this committee has focused on trying to lay out President Trump's role in spurring the attack on the Capitol. Do you think that the case could actually lead to the former president facing any direct consequences? Well, I think the consequences have been paid in lots of respects to the indictment on many of us, not just Republicans, but also members of Congress, who actually, in selling the ideas that we have and that we all have about fair elections, that we need to be able to discuss these issues. We need to be able to speak with people who are officials that run campaigns. We've been trying to do this in Dallas, Texas now for almost a year and a half. And the people who run the elections will not speak about them, even though there are uh, widespread abuses in their own system, some 55,000 votes in Dallas County alone in the 2020 elections, that after they were voted, they were removed and then re-voted several days later. These are abnormalities and inconsistencies that we need to speak about. I think they happened all across the country. And today's testimony laid out the origins of former President Trump's claims of a stolen election starting on election night and how, in the weeks that followed, many of his closest advisors told him that there was no basis to those claims after they had been investigated. That includes former Attorney General Bill Barr, who said in recorded testimony of Trump that, quote, he's become detached from reality if he really believes this stuff. What do you make of that assessment coming from someone like Bill Barr? Well, I, I heard the general say that, and in fact, uh, what I'm suggesting to you is that there is lots of pet pre uh, uh, evidence that is available to law enforcement, and that was a year and a half ago. It now has become, become very apparent that there are questions of abnormality. Was it right. Fraud? Well, he said, we Bill know. Barr said at the time that there were some abnormalities, but none of them would have amounted to ch overturning the outcome of the election. So I think that that's really where the substantive issue comes, not if there were abnormalities, but would it have changed the outcome? Do you disagree with that? Well, no, no. Let, let's agree with that. There were, January 6th was about two states where there were these abnormalities, where we were asking for the states to relook at them. Two states would have not turned that election over either. But I think that what I'm suggesting to you is, is that we now know much more now that we did not know at the time. Over the weekend, we saw what could be the first meaningful action on gun reform federally in three decades, and it appears to be bipartisan. If it makes its way to the House, where do you stand on this issue? There's much in this that we have heard about that sounds very promising. And that is that we have known for quite some time, for over 20 years, that the problems are in schools. They're with uh, juveniles who find themselves in uh, a stress and strained circumstance, uh, mental health issues, and that we need to focus on those. When we talk about mental health, we're now talking about a lot of sensitive areas about who's going to make these determinations and what that outcome would be. I think that authorities still need to know where they've got a dangerous circumstance, 
One of the things we need to change is a HIPAA law, or even psychologists who receive information about the threat of something, they have to be able to make that determination and say that out loud to, to, to you know, law enforcement people. These are the kinds of real changes that we need. Congressman Pete Sessions of Texas, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming Lindsay, on the show. Lindsay, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.